All right. So I claimed at the beginning of this that uh, I'm not much of a blues player, and that was probably decent evidence of that. So uh, anyways, that first, that first chorus, I pretty much, uh, like I said, I tried to strictly kind of stay to A-flat minor pentatonic as much as I could. And the, uh, a couple of the lines I was grabbing uh, was definitely from Albert King's Crosscut Saw. <laughs> Something like that. It was a, you know, <laughs> something along those lines. Uh, but yeah, once uh, once I kind of got into kind of leaning on thirds and stuff like that, uh, I was I was kind of sticking right in those pentatonics I was talking about. However, I was shifting around to a lot of other different positions. And so, if uh, if you haven't messed a lot with learning your pentatonic scale in different positions, it's something I definitely recommend because if you if you feel like you're always kind of landlocked into one spot on the neck. Um, can feel a little constraining occasionally. So uh, maybe we could take a look at a few different uh, patterns of the A-flat major. So, so that's kind of it right there around the fourth fret. Uh, right here at the eighth fret, uh, I've got this. I definitely use that one a good bit. So one, one more time, that's. Uh, and then, and then, aside from that, by the third chorus, I was just kind of getting into how I normally play, which is probably going to use um, some jazzier uh, kind of connections than uh, a normal blues player would. So, you know, I've probably got a, a few more scale tones and a little bit more chromaticism and stuff like that. So, uh, let's see if I can maybe um, come up with a couple of examples of what that might have been. Something kind of like that. So, if we got A flat seven. And so I'm um, starting on the sixth to the flat seven. What was that? Uh, it's the fourth. And then the second. Down those same two notes and then to the fifth. Six, one, and the five. Uh, and then you, you just kind of wrap it up with a normal kind of line. Something, something along those lines. Uh, I probably uh, very well might have gone back to kind of that earlier Django lick uh, over the five chord that I talked about earlier. I rely heavily on that one. Uh, and, I, and actually just kind of working around in that shape. Sometimes I'll just kind of fill in other notes around it, and once again, just kind of work it, just kind of working within a shape. But you know, through experimentation, I've found kind of other notes that work, and you know, some sneaky ways to get from one note to another. Uh, so yeah, maybe let's let's break down one of those. It's yes. pretty good. Uh, okay, so if we're, okay, if we're coming uh, over the five chord. Uh, this would start on the two, walks down to the to the one, then the flat seven, five, sharp five, six. So that's its own little cell you can kind of just work on. And that's in, you know that's it's pretty standard blues right there. You know, you can just you can kind of just keep the line going as long as you want, um, and you just you end up finding uh, just ways to keep going, really, or at least I do. That's kind of the approach I'll end up taking. Um, yeah. Aside from that, there was there's kind of some bends. I would I would try uh, when the one chord would come back around. I would I would try and bend up to the third. I think that's something. Well, once again, I was talking about that earlier. How whenever that note comes around, I like to try and highlight it if possible. Uh, and then another another lifesaver that tends to happen a good bit is uh, is just kind of that shape. Uh, so if you're on the five chord, so I'll just I tend to that tends to buy me some time. Uh, you know when I'm playing blues and not not as comfortable as I'd like to be. It's kind of western swingy right there. So 
mm-hmm. over the uh, over the one chord. We're on the two. Walk up to the third. Then we got the one. The th- yeah. Okay. So walk to the three. Got the one. Six. Down to the three. And back to the one. Also use a flat seven. That sounds good. And that's pretty much uh, the stuff I naturally play when I'm playing a a blues progression. So there you go. That's pretty much a breakdown of what I played. Uh, So just to recap a little bit, um, the natural place to start when playing a blues progression is to use a minor pentatonic scale off the one and blanket that over the whole tune. Uh, If you want to start stepping outside of that, remember you can use a major pentatonic on the one chord, which would be A flat major pentatonic, A flat minor on the uh, the four chord, and then E flat major pentatonic on the five. That was the first pathway we talked about. Another approach is to do a dominant seventh arpeggio on every chord in the blues. So you'd play A flat dominant seven, D flat seven, or D flat dominant seven arpeggio, E flat dominant seven arpeggio. And that'll, you know, that'll really get the, show you where all the strong uh, notes are over each chord.